All right, so here is our next problem. Let me minimize that for right now. Uh, we'll come back to the calculator. Okay, so what is the rotation rate of a point? This is the third problem um, in our sample problems. Uh, on the equator of a planet whose radius, uh, the, the radius of the planet is, um, so this is actually between, between Jupiter and Saturn, um, just to let you know, uh, 65,723.7 kilometers. Um, and uh, if it takes, uh, so it, and, and it takes the point on the equator to rotate for one complete period, um, 8.3 hours. We want to know the answer in kilometers per hour, all right? So, so we know, you know, the, the, the radius of the planet. All right, let me, let me draw a little picture real quick. Um, all right, so, so, so this, is, this is the general idea that we, we have. Up. So this is the radius of the planet, right? That's R. And then to go all the, to go all the way around, like, you know, so imagine that's the equator. That's not a very good drawing, but that's the equator. Um, so, so really the, the velo remember velocity, the basic idea here is velocity is distance divided by time, right? Um, in, in this case, the, the time is the period and the distance is actually um, the, the circumference of the circle, right? So the circumference, so imagine going all the way around the equator, um, the circumference of the circle would be two pi times the radius, all right? And then you divide by, well, if it's, if it, you know, what the period is, whatever the period is. So you divide by the time, but in this case, it's the period for the planet to rotate around once. All right, so that's that's how you do this one. Um, it's uh, not not too hard. Oops, let me write the two first. Two pi times. So now we're going to put the numbers in. Six five seven two uh, point seven kilometers. All right, so it's, the big thing here is just to remember the two pi is part of the circumference because it's got to go all the way around the circumference, uh, divided by 8.3 hours. Just as a reminder, uh, Jupiter takes 10 hours to road to spin around once. And the, the, we do that um, uh, based on uh, magnetic field information uh, about, uh, you know, with Jupiter and also, um, you know, where the great red spot is. Uh, which is, it's not right on the equator, but it's just south of the equator. All right, so so here we go. Let's let's put these numbers in. All right, so 2 uh, pi, oops, I forgot to hit one second. Nah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do that right. Um, in most calculators, you can just hit, sorry, I messed up. A a anyhow, it's 2 times pi. Uh, most calculators, you just hit 2 pi and it'll multiply, all right, times um, 6, 5, 6, 5, uh, oh, yeah, 6, 5, 7, 2, 7, oh, I didn't write that right, did I? 7, 2, 3, oh, man, this is 7, 2, 7, 2, 3, point seven. I messed that up. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. I knew it was in the thousands. Um, all right, let's go back to this. Seven, two, three, point seven. All right, so that's, you know, it's, so that's the, uh, the numerator. And then we divide it by um, 8.3 hours, right? 8.3 hours, so 8. And that'll be an answer because the numerators in kilometers and the denominators in in hours, it'll give us an answer in kilometers per hour. So that's how fast um, the the equator of this planet uh, is rotating. All right. So um, so it would be uh, 40, 49,753. Uh, point 0.5. So it says round to one place past the decimal. So it would be 
Right, anyhow, so so it's just it's this number, forty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty three point five. That's perfectly fine. All right, let's work on the next problem. So just just to show you, this is what I'm copying it from. Um, this is number four. All right, so I copied it onto here. All right, so anyhow, uh, it says find the mass of Jupiter from the following data table. Um, uh, one place past the decimal. So we're going to round it to one place past the decimal. So it says, find the mass of Jupiter. All right, and now what, what information do we have? We have that there, there's a satellite of Jupiter uh, called Ganymede that actually is the largest um, moon of Jupiter. It's actually the largest moon in the entire solar system, bigger than the planet Mercury. Um, they, they give us the size of it, all right? That's the radius of it. Um, they give the, give us the distance to the distance from the from the planet um, in thousand uh, thousand kilometers. All right, so um, and then uh, the period they give us the period of of the planet in days. Um, they give us the mass of the satellite. Um, I'm sorry, the, the period of the of of the satellite. This is the period of the satellite, um, and they even give us the density of the satellite. Um, what what I like about this problem, and that this is the general thing that we encounter in science, is you're, you're often encountering lots and lots of data, and you really have to sit there and, and say, well, what data do I need to figure out the mass of Jupiter? And and really, the, there's only just two pieces of information that we need here. Well, really, more than I mean, one is the fact that it's a satellite of Jupiter. All right, so. So, it's, and then what you're going to do is you take the orbital information. So it's this information and this information. That's all you need to do this problem, right? Because of course the problem is um, the modified, we just need the modified version of Kepler's third law. I'm gonna write it down here, all right? So the mass is equal to four pi squared times the distance that the object is cubed divided by um, big G, divide, which is the universal gravitational constant, divided by the period squared. And so that's the modified version of Kepler's third law. The only thing is um, D, it, which is of course this first number right here, um, is not in the proper units. D here has to be in meters. So we need to work on that, all right? So D is equal to 1,000, 70 times 10 to the third, and so e to the third um, kilometers, where one kilometer, one kilometer is 10 to the third, 10 to the third, that's supposed to be a three, uh, meters. And 10 to the third times 10 to the third is simply one zero, is 10 to the sixth. Um, 10 to the sixth power. So one, two, one zero seven zero, and and when you multiply this and this, it now becomes e to the sixth meters. That is the number that we're going to use right here. All right. For for the period, uh, they give us the period in days. Right. So the period is um, uh, seven point one. Five five days, and then we have to convert this. We got to get it to seconds, right? So one day is equal to uh, twenty four hours, as we know. One hour, one hour is sixty minutes. Remember, I use M I N for minutes to 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 distinguish it from meter, right? So, and then 60 seconds, that's a 60, uh, is one minute, all right? So the minutes cancel, the hours cancel, the days cancel, all right? So, so now we're ready to do this. Um, let's, let's get what the, what the, um, what the period is, all right? And we'll put that in our calculator. Uh, where's my calculator? Here it is, all right? <clears throat> So here, let me clear that. 
All right, so here we go. Um, so it's 7.155, oops, what did I do here? <laughs> Sorry, 7.155 days uh, times 24 times uh, 60 squared, 60 squared equals. All right, so this is going to, there's our period in seconds. So that's got to go here in the denominator. Note, and of course, we, we're going to have to square that. Um, I'm going to put that in, in memory. Okay, so here, so this is going to be um, uh, memory storage. Click this. All right, watch it. I, when I do this, and I hit memory recall, this one right here. See, there's the number again. All right. So we'll, we'll use that in just a, in just a minute when we when we do the denominator here. All right. So, um, all right. So let's let's do the numerator. So it's going to be four times by four. Like I said, most a lot of calculators you don't have to actually type. If you're multiplying by pi, you don't have to hit the times button. Just check out your calculator, see if that's true. Four times pi squared so we got to square the pi and then um times uh so, so it's it's this number right here one zero seven what one zero seven zero times ten to the sixth the xp to the sixth and now i have to cube that all right so with, with this calculator to cube something i gotta click um x to the y all right, so that there that and then um, that's going to raise it to the third power. All right, now now I'm not done, right? I still have to divide by, so divided by. It's just showing us what the numerator is going is. Um, divide by big G. All right, so I'm going to put I'm going to put this in parentheses. All right, so divided by parentheses, big G, which is remember this is on the formula sheet six. 0.67 times 10 the xp to the uh, minus 11th all right and then and then you have to multiply it by uh, the period squared all right so so we have the period stored is my in my memory so we're going to say times um, the the times the re you know, memory recall, that's the period in seconds, but of course I have to square that, all right? And so once I hit equals, that'll give me what the mass of Jupiter is. And um, here, so this it, this is, uh, this, oh yeah, all right, in this calculator, it's, <laughs> that's, that's kind of crazy. Um, so it's, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's much easier to show it in scientific notation. Let's see if I can just convert it to science. Oh, I, I don't like this calculator. Um, <laughs> but just um, so here, look, if I if I divide this by one times ten to the um, what is Jupiter ten to the twenty seventh? I think it is. Um, so if I divide this, all right. Look, so divide by one times 10 to the 27th, right? Th that'll give me the same number, um, but it'll be, you know, 1.8. So, so here, if, 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 this, if this is, this decimal point needs to be, I mean, I could count these, but that's such a pain. Um, all right, so here, let's divide it by one. I, I, I happen to know this, I mean, you don't, most most calculators it wouldn't appear as a number like that one times ten to the twenty seventh. All right, so if I'm dividing it by one times ten to the twenty seventh, let's see if this works. See that that just means there you know to move that decimal place over that was twenty seven decimal places. So so the answer is Jupiter's mass is. 1.9, right? So if it's, it's 1.89, so I've got to round it up to 1.9, 1.9 times 10 
to the 27th.